We went out looking for beauty and adventure. Motorcycles and fly fishing through the best of Colorado. Life seems so much simpler on the road. You get into a rhythm. Rivers and aspen forests. Sand dunes and the high passes. More beauty than a soul could take in. Give me the impact of beauty. Like, what is this beauty doing? Like, it feels like it's just, like, almost healing my soul. Right. You know, I said it down there, but let me say it again. Beauty really does conquer fear. It's really right. It's like when we, the other day, when we got so hot, and we were just drained, and we jumped into cold water, and you could just feel the life, you know, yeah. coming against that drain yeah, feeling. Right? It's the same way with beauty and fear. Yeah, totally is. Totally. I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes on the road as we're driving up this valley. Yeah. Just this car, this stream running down, a waterfall right. on the other side, green, verdant hills, and you're like, uh, I need, I need to stop because everything in me is going. Yeah, right. Take it in. <sighs> yeah. Take it, in. it also just feels oh, like the beauty God. just calls you into it yeah. as you're going. Because we've talked right. so much about finally getting on this. Right. Like, this is what we've trained for. This is what these bikes are made for. Right. And to see the beauty of the valleys and see these huge landscapes open up, yeah. it's like this powerful draw to get up in them. Well, in one sense, just looking around us is just beautiful. Right. Anybody can enter the beauty around us. But what we've done to get to this mm, spot, right. it's a lot of suffering, a lot of falls, right. uh, a lot of fear right. being addressed, mm -hmm. prayer, honoring our own labor to right. get through rawhide, right. we've earned some degree. Yes. You don't earn beauty, but right. we've earned the suffering okay. to be able to get to it's where like we It's like a are. higher appreciation totally. because mm -hmm. the price has been paid. It oh, it's true. If we'd taken the train into town and the gondola up here, this would be meaningless. we get our t-shirt, we oh get the little, we get the snow globe, right. and then you'd walk right. away. It would have no impact on your life. Our hearts are drawn to beauty, captured by beauty. When everything else in the world seems to make no sense, there is beauty. It speaks of a larger story. All those small stories people get trapped in, the most addictive ones are the stories that maximize our experience of beauty. And if the world was only filled with beauty, we wouldn't find it so hard to believe a good and kind hand was behind all this. But then there is affliction. This is where we really get confused about our own stories. So, this is the canyon that my best friend was killed in 17 years ago on a trip just like this. Brent was my closest friend. We spent years together backpacking, fly fishing, a lot of adventures. He was killed in a climbing accident on a trip we were leading. That kind of thing can really mess up your understanding of the story that you think you're living in if you don't have something to help you interpret it. This was the core of my fear about our adventure. I felt like it would happen again, that this was going to be my story too, or that it would happen to my sons. You see, it's the pain and fear in our lives that cause us to stay in small stories, safe stories, that give us just a taste of what we were meant for. We 
look for a taste of beauty and adventure, but underneath, there's a lot of pain. You know, early on, yeah, I had a, I had a Huck Finn childhood, like moving from the city as an early young kid to a ranch style life, you know, and, and just having like freedom, like this place, just being able to do anything. And, and that was beautiful. Yeah. That was beautiful for, a, for the time until things change, you know, in my, my home life and, and with what woundedness that, you know, came upon me. Right. I remember you saying once that as a boy, horses were safer than people. I think the thing that helped me the most to get into them was I actually understood where they were operating from. Even at an early age, I, I think I understood what fear was, you know, mm -hmm. and even at that age, you know, six, seven years old, my mom would come out to the barn and find me curled up on top of one of our old horses, just sleeping. And that was a comfortable place for me. That was a safe place. So something about your life opened that door to know something about fear? Yeah, I understood where they were coming from because you can actually be so afraid of things that you, you can't even speak or walk or, or understand. And so I think where it really came to me with the horses was they didn't really care um, what color hair I had or where I'd been or anything. They just took you for what you were. There was heartache. Yeah, yeah, a disruption. A lot of disruption in my, in my home. Um, some of that came, you know, in, the, in many different forms, you know, with my parents, of course, their issues where they were at that time. And then just abuse, you know, abuse coming in my life at a very early age um, cut things really to the quick. And so trying to navigate that as a little boy, you know, um, with a very unstable circumstances in your, in your home life, um, the horses were the place that I just gravitated to. That was safe, that was a safe place for me at that time. And I think at that point, I wasn't capable of that, taking that kind of risk anymore. You know, after abuse or, or um, not trusting men, period. Well, uh, you know, listening to your story, I, I feel a lot of grief, not, not just for you, but in many ways, my story, both of uh, physical and emotional and sexual abuse, uh, I just checked out, just as you put words to. I, I found early on that alcohol by age 10, 11, worked way better than having to feel what was inside. Whatever your interpretation of the world is, whatever story you think explains it all, it has to reconcile beauty and suffering, love and loss. That's a big cloud cell moving in our way, huh? I know. The question isn't, why is there so much suffering in the world? 
The real question is why is there so much beauty 